Resistance bands are not just for beginners. If you're advanced and you don't use the variable resistance of resistance bands, you are not building as much muscle and strength as you could be. Look to bands to provide some tremendous value for everybody, especially advanced lifters. Bands will make her dance, huh, Justin? That's, oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Big time. Wow. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, it's interesting that this still is a thing with bands that people just think they're for beginners when strength athletes, well, powerlifters in particular, have been using bands now for a long time. Some mm. of the most successful ones ever. Is it Westside uh, Barbell mm. that really kind of popularized they the did. variable resistance? Yeah, They did. So here's the thing about bands that makes them so special. The type of resistance that they provide is so different from what you'll find with machines and uh, free weights. So when I'm lifting a, a free weight, the resistance, uh, is it, it changes depending on you know, it's position to gravity. So if I do a, a lateral raise, it's light from here to here. It gets heavier. This is the heaviest point because it's fighting gravity directly with a cable. It's consistent all the way through. Mm -hmm. Bands are easiest at the beginning, hardest at the end. So the more you stretch them out, the more challenging they are. Now, why is this uh, uh, valuable? First off, it's different. So things that are different uh, create tension differently in the muscle and that can always send a new stimulus. But second, and I think most important, is it very uh, closely mirrors your natural strength curve on a lot of different lifts. So like if you did like a barbell squat, for example, most people are weakest at the bottom, strongest at the top, right? So, so you're, that top, you know, two or three inches, you can lift the most weight. The bottom is probably where you could least uh, lift the least amount of weight. So if you were to add bands to your, your weights or even just do a banded squat, it's easiest where you're the weakest, it's hardest where you're the strongest. So you can literally create almost perfect tension along with your natural strength curve. And this, again, is what powerlifters noticed and, and why it made them so strong so quickly. Do you have a theory on why uh, bands are not popular with the general population? I think because they look the way they do. They're like these colorful rubber bands. Oh, I, just, I, they're, they're like easy to so travel I have with. A, and, I have a theory. Hmm. I think Let's that... See I, I, think the, the, I think the thing that makes them so awesome is also the thing reason why a lot of people don't. And that's because you don't do as much damage and you don't get as sore. Oh, and so exactly many, that point. And so many mm -hmm. people measure which the is actually a valuable thing. Right. That, no, that's the same yeah. thing that makes them so valuable, yeah. and I think so good is why most people steer steer clear of it because it doesn't get them as sore. I mean, you can do all the banded squats you want; it ain't gonna feel like four hundred pounds on your back on the barbell squat. Therefore, we assume that oh, the free weights are so much better because they get me so much more sore. But I, in the context of what we're always trying to communicate to our audience is that most people, especially fitness enthusiasts, tend to overreach and overtrain, and bands belong somewhere in your routine. I think there's a bit of truth in that. I remember uh, when I used to train really hard for football, and we would have um, a physical therapy clinic like right next to us. Like I remember, um, you know, there'd be a lot of guys that would go in and do their rehab, and then it there was sort of this disconnect between they only used bands in the, as they were rehabbing, but then they would come in and do the yeah. free weights. And it was like, it, it, it was this association in terms of like, that's yeah. like sort of training wheels to get you back to, um, to the free weights. When in fact, I remember kind of like going in between both and noticing quite a lot of benefits from um, using the bands myself, but it was, I didn't get quite as sore. So there was that association there too. Maybe it wasn't no, enough. If you, if you want to do smart uh, strength training, you look at a modality or a training technique or a tool and you look at its strength and its weaknesses, and then you plug it in to maximize its strengths and minimize its weaknesses. So what are the strengths of bands uh, is that you can train the hell out of yourself with them. You can add a lot of frequency. You can add them to your current routine and not compromise your recovery that much. In other words, let's say I'm training really hard, um, but I want to add something that's going to really, you know, amplify my results. Well, there's not much I can add if I'm kind of already at that limit. But if I add bands, I don't seem to require more recovery. In fact, I've noticed in the past there's a, a bit of a recuperative aspect. And then frequency, well, like you can train really hard with bands every single day and get really rapid results. You can't do that with free weights and you can't necessarily do that with machines. You have to really consider the damage and the recovery more than with bands. So it's it's a it's a valuable tool. So you look at it and you say, okay, how can I use this tool and maximize its strengths? And that's 
That's definitely one of them. You know, another benefit to it that I I noticed was that it puts a lot more emphasis on eccentric yeah. uh, portion yeah, of the point. lift because you have to be able to control that to get back to the original starting point. And uh, I think that's such an overlooked and neglected part of lifting, especially mm -hmm. with uh, athletic train power lifting, you know, like like the one 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 kind of uh, aggressive style lifts. And, and you know, to, to be able to kind of really put emphasis on the other portion of muscle contraction like is a lot of benefit. Here's the other thing too. Bands are so valuable for explosive training. Yeah. So valuable for explosive training. First off, the angles I can I can modify, right? So with free weights, free weights can be amazing for explosive training, but it's way more technical and I can't pull and create resistance uh, horizontally. I definitely can't pull it from up to down. So I remember like when I was doing like grappling, judo, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, wanting to add resistance to explosive techniques. I can't use a machine because a weight stack will go flying everywhere. Yep, Machines are not designed. But I can use bands. And in fact, what I did is I had, uh, it was similar to a free motion. I think it was called a Da Vinci. And I attached bands to the weight stack. So I could do explosive twists and turns. And the band kept the, the weight stack from flopping all over the place and gave me that good, that ability to explosively pull and not generate too much <laughs> momentum where it, it changes the movement. Yeah. You know what I've never done that would be a fun experiment? Um, and maybe coming up here would be a, a good time. I'm, I'm back on my kick of being and consistent uh, lifting, and I'm actually dieting and stuff. I'm back on everything. And I've never ran like a, a pure full cycle of like a mostly all band routine, you know, for a period of time. Like I've always used it as a tool and intermittently yeah. use it within my workout, but I've never like – program like a band routine and like yep. stuck with it for like a, like a, serious resistance yeah yeah and especially yeah. in in where i'm at in my lifting career it'd be really and i would want to do it after i have good like momentum i've trained for a while like i mean sal you're in a good place because you've been very consistent for a while it'd be fun to interrupt that and be like i wonder yep. what things i would notice if i committed to just for bands for an extended period of time and do that i would I, i'll tell you what i'll stay on my consistency now and then i would love to do something switch like over that. And try yeah it. yeah so I, I had experience with that um well i always incorporated it not always um i'd say probably starting about 15 years ago i started incorporating bands and added it to my routine and saw great results but before that um when i grand opened um the the 24 fitness on santa Teresa down in south san jose before when they they did a a, a partial grand opening and the, the resistance training area wasn't open yet. It was just the cardio, the pool, the basketball court type of deal. And so, but, the, but then we still had personal trainers. So the trainers like, what are we going to do? We don't have equipment. So all the trainers did body weight and bands. That's all they did. And, and we had meetings and talked about like how to make sure your members stick around. And because everybody was like, Oh, it's not going to be as good. You know what happened after we put in the machines and free weights, a good chunk of those clients were like, I like working out. <laughs> better with the bands and with the body weight. So they had such good results. That was my first time being exposed to, oh, there's a lot of value in this. And of course, then when you see like West Side Barbell do it, like, come on, you can't get more hardcore than that. Yeah. And these guys are the strongest. These people are the strongest, you know, men and women in the world in powerlifting. And they're the ones that, and by the way, they got it from, they got the idea from Soviet studies mm -hmm. on weightlifting. Because they they would Sorry, incorporate with that this. with chains as well. And yep. yeah, all those variable resistance yeah. ways. Didn't they do a really good documentary on them? I'm that, pretty sure that, there I, is one I don't know what it's there. called, but yeah, there is a good documentary out there. Yeah, I don't remember if it, where what uh, streaming service is on, but I'm pretty sure a couple of years ago I watched a really good documentary because uh, I I knew a, a little bit. Everybody I think in the fitness community knows uh, West Side Barbell, I would think, um, but I didn't know like the whole history and everything, uh -huh. and I didn't know until I watched that documentary about they were the first ones that really bring it to power. They up. were, and that's where they got it from, like some like yep. with the R Russian Olympic teams and stuff like uh -huh. that. They were utilizing it, and they started to implement it in their training and saw huge results. And then it's obviously a staple there now. Yeah. They're the ones I think that made it popular to the U.S. Right? They did, and then it finally started to come over to the bodybuilding space. Although bodybuilders still don't use bands much, but all it takes is you know how bodybuilding is. All it takes is for one yeah. high-ranking bodybuilder. Uh, bodybuilders use it now. You know how it's used with bodybuilders. It's really common, and I'm not the biggest fan. Combo of, it with yeah, machines. Yeah, and they yeah. put on machines and stuff. But what I mean is, is yeah, they're not, not really making it like like a like a big part of the routine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like all it takes is what a couple like champions. Yeah, no, they're it. not. They're definitely not doing that. But they are. You're, you know, they're attaching them to hammer strength machines, which I'm yeah. like. Yeah, it's you know, if all the ways you're going to utilize it, that's, yeah. not, that's kind of the lamest way to do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's it, leave it to add my something, leave it up to my it's bodybuilding something. guys. Yeah, it's yeah. not, it's not <laughs> nothing. What's up with bodybuilders? Like, it's this trend hasn't stopped where they get a machine 
and they invent an exercise using a machine <laughs> that is for some completely. I, I he gave it. me this meme. I reposted oh, it. Why? I posted a this story. Video. Yeah. <laughs> Justin blames Joyce Wool. Oh. I do. <laughs> Justin, <laughs> I do. Justin claims. Who Joyce was it? Everybody defends him now too because he's on this he's like big, post? yeah, virtual yeah, yeah. signaling guy yeah, where he's on, like on TikTok. Don't be bullied. He bullies the, the bullies. Yeah. That's who he is now. Yeah. Hey, right. who was a smart pivot? Smart pivot. Sure. There was a one that you showed me, Adam, where it was a it was a. Preacher curl machine or something, and the dude turned oh, on your shoulder press. Oh God, yeah, we know that person, so I don't want to. I don't want to railroad him. Why? 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 What they were doing? I will say the exercise that was a tricep extension. That's what it was. He turned it to your shoulder it was press. A, it was a, so if you know what a, tri a tricep extension uh, machine is, got you know, it looks kind of like a preacher curl machine, right? So you're, yep. you lock Arms in like this, and then you and the handles go over like this. And homeboy oh was standing up facing this way <laughs> and and using it like a row. Oh, that's what it was—a row. <laughs> Yeah. Now the part of it. Now Even people, worse than what I hey, thought. people listening right now are Way like, too "What stupid. the fuck?" Like, oh, I would never. The problem is though, like the uh, the dude has an incredible physique. Yeah. And so I, you know, you can't help but think like, there's yeah. going to be a ton He's of gonna gonna inspire. I already know people. next, you know, next time you go in the gym, I'm going to see some yeah. 17 year old kid rowing on the tricep extension machine. The I'm trying road. to think of the stupidest thing I've ever seen. I think that's it, up there. That's up there. That's up there. I think the other one was uh, uh, the leg curl. I saw somebody doing um, neck extensions <laughs> with the leg curl. <laughs> I just wanted to slap them. Yeah, uh, no, I, I, I shoulder press. And by the way, you know, it's, it kind of reminds me of the thing that you say about, uh, you know, you tolerate or because you can doesn't mean it's optimal, right? Yeah. Like just because you can, you know, activate your lats on them, it doesn't mean you should or it's a good idea. You know what I'm saying? So I get you could do those machines and and try and make you feel it in a specific like, muscle group. Like I have like, that. Wow, I have that so skill creative. set. Like I get it. Uh, like I could get under any machine. I can make any machine work. Yeah, I can I make a leg to. press work my chest if I get in there creatively enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can make it. I can sure. make any machine work any muscle I want if I contort my body a certain way. It's like MacGyver. If but it's it but it's yeah. <laughs> it is, it's like a, yeah. Stick of gum and mm. safety pins. Of that. How yeah. about just unlock the door, bro? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fucking yeah. <laughs> forget its intended use. Yeah. Right next to it was that's a, what I'm gonna start doing. Right hashtag next to it was a seat row, seated row. Yeah, yes, right. I have old. You know, say that was like when I was in charge of the mind pump. I used to post like. Like those memes all the time of like people MacGyvering. Literally, I put like that's what we should MacGyver. do. Hashtag MacGyver. That's yeah. a, it's a, that'll be like that's the, so that's, dated. That's by the, the way, Nobody, that's why it's ah. good. It's a subtle like most of the kids. Probably they they brought it is. back with MacGruber for a minute. Remember that on yeah, SNL? That I was did. a decent skit. Yeah, no, MacGyver's old man. That's yeah. that's been a while, dude. Yeah. I gotta tell you guys. So Aurelius is like he's talking so much, so much right now, and and we're it's just his it, vocabulary is exploding. So yeah. he's saying the funniest things, and we're also simultaneously talking about. Like body parts, right? So he's he's in this big thing now <laughs> yeah. where he's like, he goes up to someone, and he goes, "You have a penis. You have a vagina." <laughs> oh no way! Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because we taught him. You know, boys have a penis. Like a kindergarten a cop. The yeah. Career. So he goes up to my daughter. You Man, we're penis. behind. I, like, didn't, no, I, I haven't. I didn't teach him. He's like, about I got a that, vagina, yeah. and then he's like, "Papa's got a penis." Yes, Papa's got a penis. Mama's got a vagina. Yes, Mama's got a vagina. So he's this whole thing, right? So anyway, the other day, Jessica's changing his diaper, and he looks down, and he goes, "My penis is as big as Papa's car." <laughs> what? <laughs> what? what? And he comes out with his Why? He comes out with his hot wheel. Oh yeah. <laughs> Why I know. But what made him think my car, you know? That would make more sense yeah. than my car, bro. Maybe, maybe, that would, maybe, yeah. maybe, right? But I was I was dying. He went up to Jessica too the other day. He goes, uh, Mama, you have big boobs. I'm like, yeah. Okay. All right, kid. Yeah. Nobody's teaching him this I, We have to teach Max uh, the difference between him, her. He oh, he calls everybody him, oh, which yeah. is so it's totally insulting when I have like my, you know, niece over or something <laughs> like that. And they're talking. He, he, him, him, he. And he keeps saying, I'm like, no, that's a her. That's a her. You know, oh, okay. Like he's trying to figure it out. And then he's he can't say it as well. So he'll try it like three times and he'll, then he'll default back to him again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, dude. <laughs> uh, he also, he'll fake like, he does fake expressions now, which is kind of cute. It's actually is cool because it shows he's, he understands certain things. So I show up after work the other day. I walk in and he walks up to me and he totally fakes a yawn. It's not real. And he goes, hmm. I'm like, are you tired? Yeah, I'm tired. I'm like, okay, right. <laughs> Total fake yawn, bro. That's not even real. Anyway. I think that's the cutest when he actually decides, like when he says he's ready for bed. Like that is, it happens, it's rare, but when it does, it's hilarious. Like, he's had, I like, need a nap. Yeah, he's had like a busy day or something like that. It's just been long, a lot of play yeah. and we'll be sitting up and maybe we're letting him stay up a little bit later than usual and he'll be like, mm. mommy, it's time for bed. I'm tired. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, okay, let's go. I know. <laughs> let's go to bed. Hilarious.
All right, today's program giveaway is MAPS Anabolic Advanced, the newest MAPS program. Here's how you can win that program. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this video, subscribe to this channel, and turn on notifications. Do all those things, and if you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, we put together a brand new program bundle and discounted it. It's called the Time Crunch Bundle. Here's what it has. MAPS 15 Minutes, MAPS Anywhere, MAPS Prime, and the Eat for Performance eBook. It's all discounted, $200 off. That means the entire bundle is only $99.99. If you're interested or you want to learn more, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Hey, I, I, I found some, some cool studies on red light therapy. But you know, red light therapy, I've talked about this before, there's a lot of applications. There's also mental health applications. So it's not just skin, hair, joint pain. Those are the ones that uh, I've talked about in the past. They also show it helps with um, depression and anxiety. Give you a little cognitive boost. Um, that's I'll look that up. I don't know, yeah. but but depression, and anxiety, red light therapy, like the one Juve has. Okay, so like that type of red light therapy actually has been shown to reduce depression in people, especially people who suffer from seasonal affective de uh, depression mm, disorder. Yeah. So uh, I got it. I actually did like a, a live um, questions yesterday, and somebody asked me about um, Juve red light therapy. And uh, I didn't answer because I actually wasn't a hundred percent sure. Do you know of any actually studies that show any sort, any sort of adverse effects? Was no. there any negative effects to potentially staying under the red light therapy for too, like long? too long? Yeah. yeah. Or too, yeah. Much, Intensive. too much exposure. Yeah. You can actually too long. You'll actually feel, you'll feel like the skin's a little tender or whatever. So yeah. that's why they tell you they limit how much you, you it's use. not damaging to the eyes, but I know if it's like direct to too close there, it could be problematic. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, no, actually it showed improved eyesight with that, but don't, don't quote mm. me. We'd have to look that up. Yeah, it's funny that, so you, okay, you bring that up. So I know the new models, like, so the park city house, we got all the new models in there and they sent, they shipped the like, like tanning goggles yeah. yeah that's why I to come with it but then I when i know, talked yeah. to my my physician about because I, I remember when we had max i was curious if i could have like i wanted to make sure yeah. it was okay like is he too young or is he all right if, he, if i so i wanted to hold him and we could both be there like sitting there laying next to it or whatever and he says no no it's great for him and stuff like that and i said and what about the eyes he says no it's good for your eyes mm -hmm. so you know i was told that it was good i for think your just because it's bright because yeah, it's bright maybe. you know regardless a lot of people don't like to look into it i don't like to look into a bright red light so I tend to close my eyes, huh. but I did. I know that the the our partners at Juve told us that it helps with eyesight. So remember, it would it, it it's not tissue specific. It red light fuels and feeds the mitochondria, or, or has the mitochondria produce more energy and become more efficient. Which so is the all cells, which is the cells engine cells of all cells, yeah, right? Affected. So it's like I mean, if you can, if your so skin is going to rejuvenate faster. If it gets down to the joints, it's going to help with joint pain. Yeah, um, it's going to help with hair regrowth. You know, all those all those things that the the studies uh, are showing. Now. Testosterone, yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, so um, what's up with so Elon Musk is going to start a town or something? Bro. Oh, right yeah, out like twenty five miles outside of Austin, I believe he bought uh maybe doug can double check this either three thousand i think three thousand something acres and wants to develop an entire little mini city out there and he and the idea and the concept is is to house his his people so if you work for tesla i, I think the you know and again don't quote me on this but i i believe he said that he's going to uh, rent it to them for significantly less. So I think like the average cost around rental for the, you know, a three bed, two bath type of house out in the Austin area or out right outside of Austin is like around $2,200. And he wants to like price it at like 800. So it'll be really, really interesting. So it'll be part of one of the perks of working there type of deal. I, I, What'd you find yeah. there, Doug? Yeah. At least 3,500 acres. Okay. So it's yeah. close. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so what do you guys think about that? I think that's such a great idea. I cool. think yeah. that we already put our team on looking at property over there. <laughs> I think it's a, I think it's a, a brilliant. I, I mean, look at uh, Google. Google is doing it right here, right up the road. Mm -hmm. uh, you, Are they doing they, housing? Yeah, dude. This yeah. whole this whole thing is bought by yeah, Google. right down the street. Yeah, they're doing all those kind of all that construction the on the apartments. Also, oh, wow. that, that's all Google's tied to. So that. they'll put employees in there. I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't know exactly if it's all employees or how the, I don't know wow. the details, but I know that Google owns like so all your, this real estate. Your theory that you had a long time ago might be coming yeah, true. The campus thing. Remember yeah, when I said that? They have their own there money. as long as they can. And look at you have Doctors, now. They'll pay you in dollars, accessible. but then they'll add like Tesla bucks. I so believe that. I'm so glad you brought that up. 
And I'm so glad that you admitted that I was probably right. Again. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember saying that you weren't. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I, think no, I think we're you, all on board. Uh, yeah. Were you? Yeah, I think was so. Was it one of those ones you were arguing with me about? No, no. Uh, I thought no, you guys no, thought maybe. I was kind of crazy I when think I, so. I think. I think you thought no, it was, it was crazy. just originally my idea, but you know, yeah. <laughs> you <know, actually. laughs> <laughs> take some credit yeah, for it. Right. Yeah, no, I do think for those that haven't didn't hear that episode a long time ago, I really think that we're moving in this direction where, especially when you look at how polarizing um the political landscape has been and all like and, and how different like every state is becoming right. like so i think what you're going to start to see especially these massive companies like a apple and facebook and google and tesla that have a, a huge community of people that are probably a, a good similar ideology that start to create these mini towns mm -hmm. And you'll get deals on the real estate. They'll get deals on the doctors and the and I th and I think yeah, they'll just, have grocery stores, doctors, banks. All and that I think they're gonna make them if they're they'll make them competitive as shit. They'll be better. I think well, they'll be better. This is just reinforcing. I mean, in Austin has been this big tech boom of all these companies that have like moved over to there. This is gonna be like Silicon Valley Part Two, pretty much. You know, with him building that, and then everybody else, you know, in that area. But yeah, I think. This, this would be interesting to watch to see how that all kind of develops where they're like new cities and they kind of create their well, own think standards. Well, think about what, what you can do, right? You could you have your standard pay. So you pay an employee, you know, 150 grand a year. However, what's also included with that is 10,000 Tesla bucks every year. And here's what you can get with 10,000 Tesla bucks. And then you, you live in this town. Your rent is, you know, 150 Tesla bucks. You can go to the grocery store here. You don't have to spend a single dollar. Well, I see, I see it as a way of them actually reducing costs, right? Engineer, that's, let's say, I, that's yeah, 100%. Yeah, let's say the average engineer, you know, runs you a quarter million a year, and now Tesla can pay that engineer 100K a year, but and and that seems like a dramatic drop for them. But that's okay because his schooling, his doctor, his groceries, his car washes, his, like, dry cleaning, everything is in this community, and he gets enough Tesla bucks a year that it covers all that, which it makes up for yeah. the or and, and and it would obviously save money for Tesla because it wouldn't be a one to one. So you know, twenty Tesla bucks would be worth like forty. Yeah, and plus then you could leverage that community on those professions, right? So you bring a doctor in there who's the best of the best. He gets free housing because he lives in the community. He gets to take advantage of all the resources that are in there, and then you know, he gets now he provides a service for a reduced cost to the company, and he's fully employed. It's just what does that say there, Doug? It's not just Tesla. Oh, so the proposed munis municipality is said to be adjacent to the boring and SpaceX facilities that are oh, also wow. in construction. Is okay, so all, so, okay. All so all his so all his companies that he's yeah. a yeah. part of. Bro, this is like this is gonna start looking interesting. They're gonna like they're gonna have these like robots at the front, you know, like letting people in and out. And I'm just like trying to how long how, like, how, 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 how like, cool is it when they have um, sports teams that represent them? Yeah. Twitter versus Facebook, for, and then it's oh, like yeah. you get meet, <laughs> meet on the hockey. Each uh, hockey house has a the, robot washing dishes for everybody yeah. you know, <laughs> before they fly to the before moon. they go up yeah. there. Yeah. I don't know. Crazy. You see that poll? You saw that poll on the forum? Did you not? Did it shift? Because it was definitely oh, uh, it was way high. Just like what? six months to a year ago it was all you and like none on me, and now it's like it's uh, close, dude. Uh, Closing uh, the gap. A lot of people are losing faith. Make it real. Let's see. We'll see what happens. That's it. How long until? you see entire towns and states become corporate owned you know what i mean uh, <laughs> they have their own army I mean, might as well our government i, mean, I, I, I don't know, you know I don't what I'm go down that road. Do I, I mean i i so okay yeah. are you guys are I'm you guys Google are Land. you fa a fan i like it do you like it it's all voluntary Why that's not? what i mean yeah, yeah, it gives you, you options. yeah you you have the, you have the option to work and it, what a cool way for them to be competitive to recruit yeah. talent so it's only going to reduce the cost of living it's only going to force all of them to up you know what they provide and what they give inside yep. the community, so it's good for the consumer and the and the employee who's potentially going to work. What'll there. be interesting is is through yep. this competitive market. Let's say other com this starts to become a thing with these big companies, is to see what they end up realizing brings the most value to the company. Mm. So, in other words, is it let's promote a town and city with perks and stuff that tends to attract young single, you know, uh, people willing to work eighty hours a or week families. or yeah. Families, right. or do we see, seem to get better value when we promote, like when we put schools in there, and we give good. What's your guess? Care. The family, family. What's your guess? I think the families yeah. produce more, more stability, more consistency. But I think the dynamic, uh, uh, the the you know, which by the dynamic. way, that's kind of counter to what most uh, big companies want. They they tend to like the. 
the single person who's willing to work 16 hour days and not take any days off. That's what they, that's what that's, that's, I think that's the, um, the belief, but I think in reality you want, uh, I think married men with children are some of the highest producing, most productive well, people because of the responsibility and stuff. That's the that's the argument. Has the strategy then also is it still leaning more towards like getting the the highest performer in terms of like a developer, you know, in tech companies? Like because what I forget what report that was, but basically they found out that like they could basically replace like you know oh. fifty to like a hundred of these uh, uh, code developers. Yeah, who was it that told us that? Was this ex CEO of Netflix? Who told yeah, us it was that? somebody. I don't remember. What you're somebody in about. the tech space. Where he said brought that one up. high performing uh, oh, engineer, oh, like one. He said would, would out produce twenty. Yeah, and so it's worth it to hire one, pay him a shit ton of money. Then get higher ten or fifteen. You actually save the money with that strategy. Yes, yes, yes. I mean that philosophy was. Tr- I remember when I learned that lesson in the gym space. That's yeah, true. So anyway, when I so yeah. I remember I was running. This is when I was running. Uh, and this I actually this is my third club I've managed by this time. And they back back then they used to have kind of a, a blueprint for the square footage of your gym. And the amount of tra- traffic you'd have, you should have X amount of trainers right. to support that. So there, and that, I remember you, that and so as you know, as a manager, you had this quota that you wanted to get up. Like, oh, you're supposed to, you're supposed to have 22 trainers for the size of this facility and this right. and that. And so they would push that. And so you know, if I lost down to 18 trainers, so I'd be on this hiring spree, and we we try and hire these people. And same, so I get to my third, my one of the last club I finished up at, and it was one of the biggest ones. And that was, it was supposed to be around 20 something trainers. And I believe Justin, you were a part of it when I went, I was all the way down to eight mm. at one point. I was and, just going to say, yeah. and I remember I decided, you know what? I don't believe Crazy this. Eight. I don't believe this to be true. I believe if I had five to eight studs, just superstars that we could carry this, this, this business. And I, I, I predicted that they would be happier because they would be more fed and taken care of. Yep. Mm-hmm. They'd, have, they'd be overwhelmed with their schedule. Plus, it's and, a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it was a culture of uh, of uh, success, a culture of everybody's a winner. Yeah, yeah. yeah they were versus yeah. what the the typical makeup of a a, a, a team is eighty twenty rule. You know, eighty percent of them weren't making very much money, and then twenty percent were making all the money. You'd have twenty two trainers, and five of them. We're, we're ripping, or I'd say two of them are really ripping, three of them are doing pretty good, and then the rest were like average or below average. Yep. And I flipped that model on its head, and I remember them, like the company putting a lot of pressure on me for doing that. I said, no, and, you know, luckily we were we continued to outperform the numbers, and so they allowed me to. But I mean, yeah, we proved that we could run this place with a third of the trainers that I was supposed to have in there. And I think they were, I mean, that was one of the yeah, best teams I ever had. Them, yeah. the, the biggest numbers, month that, month. the gyms I ever produced, and these are big box gyms, were I would have four killer salespeople and a training staff that was between eight to 12. That was always, the, the, the numbers always fell right around there where everybody was a killer and crushed it. And when it got bigger than that, it tended to get bloated. You can't focus as much on your training development. But I'd have four Killer salespeople, which usually was assistant manager, senior sales counsel, and then two that were like up. If I had that, you know, you give me a 40,000 square foot gym with a, three, you know, 250, $300,000 goal, and we're going to Well, it, it created this uh, culture. And it's, it's funny that you we wouldn't think this or that the company didn't think this because when you would onboard someone new. So I got so I get this point where, and Justin was a part of this team. We had eight, just everyone's a master trainer. Everyone's crushing. Everyone's making great money. And then I, you know, hire number nine, brand new kid, you know, yeah. off the street or whatever like that coming into the, in the, his, his bar is set so high because everybody on the team is a and he, yeah. he quickly. They identify if they got what it takes to try and keep up with these guys or they quit and move on. And then you go on to the next one. And so I think the power of that is incredible versus, you got a team of 80% of them are, you know, average or below average. And then they kind of go like, oh, well, I'm doing all right. I just got here. I've only been here for a couple of months and I'm already doing almost as good as, you know, Mark and Sandy and Richard, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, so, so they let off the throttle versus looking up at these eight trainers that are killing it all the time. So it's interesting that there's, uh, the, that there's companies and people that still live, which also example of what we're seeing with, Elon Musk and Twitter, and you're starting to see he cut how all of, these companies yeah. starting. He cut like half or a third of the workforce. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of Twitter. Yeah, and they're performing better. Yeah, and now you have all these other companies that are starting to re suit. reevaluate yeah. that. Um, you see, know what? The tech you, market was so bloated. It was so it it was so competitive. So much money was just flying around. Do you know what? Just you, speaking yeah. of that, 
this blew me away. I, I didn't I didn't know how this worked until I was listening and credit the All In podcast. They were dropping some knowledge on this, and and I I didn't know this that you could do this. So a lot of what uh, what factored into the bloat in the in the tech, um, you know, in Silicon Valley is this ability to hand out shares and it not come off the balance sheet. Oh yeah. Meaning, and I'll just use like some ra like random numbers. Like the, let's say the company is. Uh, makes a hundred million dollars a year. If you go out and you spend fifty million dollars on in employees and stuff like the, to keep the business running, like that, you you only made fifty million dollars, right? right? So you you have to deduct that. But if you handed out fifty million dollars worth of shares to employees, then that doesn't come off the balance sheet. You still are a hundred million dollars. So in they the can green. appear to their investors as being you know super not in the red. Or, yes, yeah, super, yeah, profitable. super profitable. But yeah. you're, I mean, you're still but you're, diluting the shit because all those people could technically they go could and cash, cash those, in, and then it would cash those out, the and it would be. Yeah, but it, yeah. but it, but it does. So it get, it comes it, huh. it, it's it's in a different category, and so you have a lot of these tech companies, that, and that's why they were going these crazy hiring mm -hmm. sprees. They give out that's why like people love switching from Facebook to Google or hop around these because they get these great packages. Oh, we'll sign you for uh you know a hundred thousand dollars a year, but then we're going to give you three hundred thousand in shares or what that. So it's like oh damn, that's a four hundred k come yeah. up, and so people are are hopping, and then meanwhile mm -hmm. they don't have to show that three hundred k loss or hit to the business because it's not a hard cost like you know buying like dollars yeah dollars so are getting exposed to investors so it's, it's getting, getting so that a lot of this everything that's happening right now with the recession and the pullback itself. yeah is this is they're all getting exposed by that? So I didn't know that. I didn't even oh, know that was a thing. Yeah, no, oh, I know. Because yeah, getting investment like money was real crazy. Like, there was a mad hustle for that, and it was like happening everywhere. The investing in like all these companies around incubators popping it up everywhere. So you, that's you know, all kind of and you know what stalling. Though, you know what that because I obviously we live here. So I, and I have a lot of family that works in that space. You hear a lot of these uh, success stories like oh so and so retired got crazy cashed out crazy amounts of shares so and so do. That's the small minority. The vast majority of people that get shares, especially with startups, yeah. they end up making nothing. Yep. They end up coming out and not making nothing. A lot of sweat up. equity with no return. Yeah. So yeah. it's like it, you hear those success stories, which makes you think like this is the way to do well, it. Well, that's the the, the vision, that's the dream they're, they're selling. Yeah. You know, well, that was always a dream. Especially in the last 10 years. I mean, it, we, there, more, there's been more success stories of startups. And falls. My sister went to work at Zoom. Was a millionaire on paper for a second there during the pandemic, and then it. Bro, well, how much did that hurt her stomach? Did she get? Did she? Cash oh yeah, she lost. Cash. I mean, she lost. Oh, I had to leave. The, left the company. Real. I mean, because you saw this, you know, and you couldn't cash out. I remember out. that when you, you said she. Out? No, you, there was. A, you have to Zoom keep it for a certain period of time. Oh, because she was new. <laughs> new. It was a vesting oh. period. Oh, at oh, one I point, I thought she was, she'd already been there. She for was a millionaire on paper at one point, and then all of a sudden, to do everything went down. Oh. Yeah, I mean that's what you know that happens yeah. all the time to people yeah, that's in that space. Typical. Yeah, it's pretty well. Typical. I mean, sometimes you get lucky. My my niece was on the, the 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 better side of that, so she she rode. She was with Facebook early on. Yeah, she got a bunch of shares on it F four years ago now, three or four years ago now, like right before the pandemic. So that she bought her first house, she pulled out all she cashed out her shares to put the down payment on the house. Those same shares today now would be worth one third. So oh, she got. Yeah. She basically got it. She a, timed a, it right. Oh yeah. I mean, she wasn't even trying I mean, to time. I, it was just like she wanted to buy a house at that time. I actually think I remember advising her like, "Ooh, maybe not a good time to buy a place right now." But looking back now, that was a brilliant move on her part to cash her sta her stock out. Yeah, I have, I have a cousin, and then I have a cousin who's you know millionaire from doing that, working in a company as a startup with shares. But I I know way more people that did that and ended up with nothing. But that's the promise, right? That's why yeah. it's so exciting. Yeah. Anyway, I wanted to bring this up, Justin, because I know you wrote this in your notes. <laughs> we have to talk about <laughs> which one. Sea monsters and whales. Oh yeah, okay, yes. Because I know you. this. What is it? I know this. this. Sea monsters I want, I want, and whales. So there's this interesting uh, <laughs> correlation here. Um, so sea monsters of the past, like the, they've spotted them uh, a lot of times. Like they're, they're described as is almost like prehistoric, right? Like, like a serpent, like a serpent, or like some kind of head at the top that like is poking out of the water, right? like Nessie. It's, yeah, Nessie. Yeah, like and Loch this Neck is monster. one of those things. Yeah, exactly. And so they've noticed this phenomenon, like you know, in the in the deep ocean somewhere, and and it's so, been written about for hundreds of years, and in, in you know nautical books, and you know, from the 1300s, right? 1400s. You know, we see it and so everybody's like, there has to be sea monsters out there. If they've, of so many people have written about these and they all sound the same and it's been happening for hundreds and hundreds of years, maybe even in some paintings that are thousands of years old, you'll see stuff like this. Yeah. But they think they know what the answer is. Yeah. So there's this interesting um, ritual, I guess I should say, with um, whales. So as, as they breed, 
Um, and uh, so they, I, I'm not too sure whether or not they stick with one part. Basically, they have multiple partners. So uh, as they breed, uh, sometimes while uh, one of the whale, so if they're having like a threesome, let's just say, uh, with there's whale threesomes. I just found this out. <laughs> one of them, as it waits, flips itself up. And so basically what you're seeing is the whale's penis at the top of the surface. It's whale dick. It's whale dick. Really? That's yeah. what the sea monster is. So it's Doug, waiting show there. What, show me what some whale dick looks like. It's today. waiting yeah, this there is a all excited. for me here. Uh, <laughs> whale dick. Okay. This is really just a mess. No, just put whale, whale penis looks like sea monster. We should go on like a week where we like intentionally like talk <laughs> yeah. about things that like. Then he has to look up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this Ooh, is it's so for no, example it's the Loch Ness monster obviously that it's, can't be a whale it's a lake yeah no, so that lake. cannot be a whale. but so I that's, use that as an example that's not the yeah exactly yeah. so it, it just looks like that because of um it, it looks like the head of a uh something popping out of yeah. the water it's it's pretty big but it's yeah it's pretty, I mean it's impressive yeah there it is it, oh, it is a whale at the end of the day well bro that looks very much so like right. that meanwhile it's a freaking it's a whale it, flashing you yeah. It's it's showing it's it's Johnson. It's a whale dick pic. That is as big as Sal's car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tying it in. I yeah. like it. Oh, yeah. Full, full circle. Call back. Yeah. Full oh, circle. Wow. So he okay, so if that's you, the whale that's waiting. Right. Okay. So if you yeah. ever see a whale penis out in the ocean, uh, there's some out, freaky stuff going on. That means there's probably yeah. a threesome going Underneath on. Underneath and he's waiting his turn. Yeah, exactly. He's waiting his turn. He's cooling to, it off to real get quick. Let me, yeah. let me put this up here yeah. real quick while I Interesting. Just, while while just, Fred has, <laughs> has his turn. <laughs> Hurry up, Fred. Remember when I thought that I thought Chapstick was made out of whale dick. Remember that? Remember what? When, remember when what? I brought that up? Wait, what? Time. I thought that was Chapstick? Yeah, I thought no, Chap but I thought perfume is whale semen. Whale semen. So yeah, well, that's what you guys. Remember, you guys corrected me. Yeah, I was like, yeah. "Isn't because I was." Oh yeah, I, this is not. Hey, this is hey, this is not the first time Justin's brought well dick up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, right. I'm here for the facts. You guys. This is not the first time. Do you know what one of the most expensive, one of the most expensive things you can find from the ocean is? I think whale vomit. Whale vomit. Yes. Whale vomit. Yep. Why? Look it up, Doug. Uh, whale so vomit. When it eats a certain type of jellyfish. Ambergris. What's it called? Ambergris. Used yeah. for medicines like a and delicacy? Po potions and oh. as a spice. They use it for a bunch of stuff. And used to stabilize the scent of fine perfumes. Yes. Perfumes, yeah. And what's the cost of it per pound or whatever? Uh, it's ridiculous, dude. Yeah, if you found a huge goop of it on the on the beach, like you're balling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's like gold. Whales are weird. It's really weird. Yeah. Like it's they they have all kinds of interesting uh, traits. It's around ten thousand bucks per pound. Ten thousand dollars a pound, bro. Whoa, right? Look at Adam all of a sudden became a whale. Whoa, expert. <laughs> Adam's gonna be collecting down. that vomit. It's yeah, a, it's illegal in the U.S. It's, it's illegal. illegal? It's illegal to collect, keep, or sale because it's part of an endangered marine mammal. It throws it up. Is it just from sperm whale or like what's, is it a specific kind yeah, of whale? Yeah, it is sperm yeah. whale, I Justin. So. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Wow. Yeah, he knows his whales. Justin's on fire. Yeah. 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 Whale, hey, whale wait, wait, why would dicks. they make that illegal? Doesn't the whale get rid of it? It's like, or, or are they afraid that we're going to like, that people will capture them? Yeah, it's probably, yeah. Make them puke. You know? yeah. I mean, that would make sense. Come on, guys, party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. So, all right, more stuff, Justin, that you wrote down that you failed to pick, uh, bring up. But I want to hear. <laughs> oh man, oh, I want to right. hear. Notorious for bringing notes. He, does, he puts notes up there. I'm always like, <laughs> well, we get we go up, on these tangents, and then it's just like such an abrupt. You got to wedge yourself in there with Sal, dude. Yeah, yeah, okay, is. well, he okay. says we. He's talking about me, <laughs> you, and yeah, yeah, Challenger. Well, so yeah, you know Conspiracy. the Challenger, right? That. Rocket. Blew up yeah. the rocket with yeah. a head that brought. Was that 1984? Uh, 1984. Was like one of the saddest. That sounds about right. Things I remember watching as a was kid. Did you guys watch that as kids? Yes, in elementary I school? watched it, it so live, young. and I, I remember crying with. Did you with my friend's mom? Like we were watching it together, and I was just like, "Oh my!" Because it crashed and, and blew up. Dude, we're gonna get to the conspiracy, but this was a vivid. This was a huge. Well, it wasn't a mistake from the school. I guess they didn't know this was gonna happen, but they gathered all the kids. In yeah. the classroom. Now, why did they do this? It was one of the first uh, teachers to go up to space. Yeah, we so were was a school teacher about it. That was on the Challenger. Mm. So they had all the all these kids. I remember we were sitting in the classroom, and then they do the countdown. The whole class is doing the countdown. So it's 1984. So I got to be in like second grade, maybe. Yeah. And we're like 10, 9, You're 8. Look this up, and then man. it takes off. And we're like, yay. And then it goes up, and it blows up. Yeah. And I'll never forget the teacher's. Turned off the TV, and then I saw the teacher go out the door, and they were crying, and we were so confused. Yeah, was like, like silence, and the kids. Were yeah, like, we were like, oh, we, "What's was, going on here?" It was such a bummer. What happened? Um, but anyway, I want to hear this. Yeah, so 
<laughs> Apparently, there's this this sort of conspiracy that's that's uh, working its way around. That's a, a funny one. It's, I don't know if there's any truth to it or anything, but it's um, basically that there's there's been signs of of some of the astronauts that were on there that are still alive. That 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 what they would look like when they're older, you, even with the, a very similar name or the same exact name they're using, and they're a professor somewhere else at like a a college and there's some examples of so uh, what's the motive why would they pretend to kill him then have no idea there's there's nothing around that it's just oh. weird that it's like it blew up we all saw it blow yeah. up but now like you you can see like later on and, and hopefully you can find doug um some of the the astronauts like they they showed like what they would look like today and then you see like these people that they brought up as an examples, like it's trippy oh. that they look exactly like oh, there it, it could be them. But why, why would they fake it exploding? Like one of them is that guy apparently is his brother, um, the, the bottom right. And then, you know, like these are all, these are all just older, older people that have like the same name as the astronaut and look like, them. and look like them. So it's like two factors. Like they, they use the same name and they look just like them, but like a really older version of them. Wow. And you're they, like, what? Why would they do that? Maybe because they were going to, are they still alive? Is, is like, they were going to reveal the secret that earth is actually flat. Is that what it was? Oh God. They're like, I'm telling it flat. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here, dude. Yeah, yeah. You just, <laughs> anytime anybody goes to the flat earth, it's like, hey, done, dude. Conspiracy hey, I, is the over. best conspiracy theories link together several conspiracy theories. <laughs> this is true. You have to connect this, all this of them. This is true. Yeah. I make, have something for I you have guys no idea that why. is not a conspiracy theory, but I, I mean, uh, I love when I see like really interesting or smart potential business ideas. Uh, it's a whale vomit. Hear me out. Yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hear me out. This is our, <laughs> our, our new side venture for Mind Pump. Yeah. So I, I, I Doug will have to search this because I don't know the, the the names of these pods, what they're called now, but I just I think it's brilliant. They're starting to pop up in airports. I foresee these being lined. Are these uh, the, sl on, the sleep pods? Yes. Yeah. Where there there's like a credit card thing. You just put on. I love that. I think that's brilliant. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that you're going to see those just lined up. I all, would 100 percent use that. How many people are going to get caught having sex in those? I mean, probably. You know, what I'm seeing all the above. You probably have sex in there, sleep in there, you read in there, do all the above in there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to always be right there. there. I think you just fit one. Misusing it. Yeah, it looks so like no. one person. I love that because uh, you have a layover for four hours. Oh, oh yeah. I'd take a nap. Can I go take a nap? Yeah. I told you guys when I had to stay in, uh, when Jessica and I flew to Thailand, we got these really cheap tickets. And then we realized why they were cheap. We didn't notice that the that it looked like we only had a two-hour layover. But we didn't notice the date was a day later. So we had a 26-hour oh layover. And I had to, and I was in China, and I couldn't leave the airport. So, like all those hours, you had to be in the airport. In only. the airport in oh, Beijing. Look at, look at leave. the ones that are in Japan. Well, and, Japan yeah, they, they've had these for years in Japan. Yeah, they yeah. call them yeah, capsule those. hotels. Um, you can just rent them for a night. Just a little capsule you stay in. I you thought that's see. a brilliant Super idea. Super smart. It, it is. You know, the, actually, the person who shared it with me, the act, the reason why they actually, so I was like, oh, this is a brilliant business. But that's not why they they were sharing it with me because of our point of moving in this direction of being isolated and not being social oh. and like, they're like, look at where this and that I could totally see this being normalized where you go to the airport and there's no more all this crazy congestion or everybody's in their pods. It's like silent. Can you imagine going to the airport and like. The only people that are food go inside the little. That's pods. right, and then you're in there, and you're in these. You're yeah. isolated, and it's silent because there's these soundproof little pods and stuff like that. Like, yeah. and then think of all the other things where you're in these mm. crowded areas. We got to wait in line or do things like that. If if they adopt, start adopting this kind of concept of where you like isolate from everybody, so you have privacy and you pay a small fee, so you have that privacy. That's awesome. I'm for, all for it. Dude. Yeah, I, I, I know. I would have loved. Well, that's why I know it's going to work because yeah, it's yeah. like. Even though I'm not a fan of moving in this direction where well, we're all less and less social, yeah. but the truth is, boy, that's an that's an area where I don't want to be bugged, and I could see myself. It's utilizing interesting that. though if you think of places like I preferred, like I, I don't mind being social, and I like being social if I'm out like in a town and I'm going checking out stores and whatever. But like at the airport, like get away from me. Like I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the stress. Yeah, it's like already a stressful traveling. place. That's why you're, you're already like, annoyed. And then everybody's just I all up it. on top of I, you. And I hate it, and I hate uh, uh, when you go through uh, when they have to. You got to do yeah. the take your shoes off, or what is that area called? They check your security. Security. I hate that. 
You know what? Even if it's a short line, I feel like yeah. I'm being rushed like crazy. Well, oh, there's so much like, urgency oh. over nothing. Yeah. Like it, people getting up and trying to like push their then, way and through then, and when you're getting I, your bag. I can't help yeah, but think that stupid thing that scans me. You got to put your arms like this and they scan you. And they always think I have to always have to check me afterwards. I can't help but think I'm getting like hella radiation or some weird shit. Yeah. Something. So another thing I have for Justin, um, because Sal's already aware of this. So I saw a post on Instagram and it was showing basically how some people can speed read oh, yeah. or maybe even how they're going to like write stuff in the future. I don't even know what the, the whole post concept was, but it like the minute I looked at it, so it was like a whole paragraph. Like I read it like in two seconds and I'm a terrible reader. You did? Yeah. Bro. So uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> act a little less. Was, su- maybe act a little less surprised, dick. asshole. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm so <laughs> just, you. Just, you, just read. you put three things together. <laughs> so what it so what it did so is this paragraph and the first three letters of every word were in bold and the rest were just regular. And then your brain predicts predicts it. Yeah. Hmm. And even and and as as slow as I am at reading, I read that shit hella fast. I was like, oh, and right away I showed sound. I'm like, is this how you read? Mm. You must have this ability to just see the first three letters really quick and, and do that. But and because it was just, done in bold, my, my brain picked it up right away, and I was mm. able to read it super fast. That's exactly so what why would they not do all books like this? Oh. Yeah, like it wouldn't the future of printing book. It is would make Jim, sense. Jim Quick's hacks, or what? I, I don't even know where. You know, they can yeah. also take they can also take the first two letters and the last letter, and then the ones in the middle jumble them up, and you'll still know what the word is because yeah. it, it, because real reading or fast reading or or, or efficient reading is predictive. Mm-hmm. It's not sounding out. Of like course not. Your brain is always it, doing that. It's impossible. To yeah. Connect. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what I mean, you know. I mean, that's how I read is sounding it out in my head as yeah. I go. And I know that you read way, get it done way faster. And that's be- has to be because you're yeah. predicting what the word is. I just, I, and of course I've, all the books I read, I try, but yeah. I can't seem to wrap yeah, my I brain always skim, around it. Like I'll skim, but then I, I miss a lot of the meat of it. Well, you know? that when I saw that, it completely like unlocked it for me. Yeah, you don't. Hmm. No, so that's so I told Jessica that. the same thing, and she goes, "Well, think about how much more you'd uh, absorb if you read slower." And I said, "No, no, no." When, I, when you guys know this about no, me, you focus I, more when I'm way. into something yeah. and I read real fast. I remember everything. So no, it's not I, like I'm. Less, I actually think you. Yeah. I mean, remember when I told you guys that hack when Tom Bill, you got yes, me to, this, to listen at a faster speed. And I do that too. I it does. I actually I take in mm-hmm. more than if I'm <laughs> listening to it slow. If I'm slow, it's so easy I can be distracted thinking of other things and then I trail off whereas if it's super fast, I have to focus as like what you're doing. If you're only leading that reading the first three letters, your brain has to be working to predict. Yeah. So you're consuming everything yeah. that way. It just it kind of it completely blew my mind. Like I did not and then I was like, why wouldn't everything be in written? You know why would you, you not write everything Adam, like this? Adam, I got your business idea for you. Convert all books to that. an app that does that. All you do is you put your you download your book and just highlights the it just bolds the Bold, first three bolds the first three speed reading app. That Are you looking cool. that up, Doug? Yeah, I am. I'm not getting uh, a lot of details yet. Uh, maybe Andrew has something over there, but um, so the three first three letters or first three words? Three letters of oh. every word. Yeah. Oh, of every word. Okay. Yeah, it, first yeah. three letters of every word were bold, and the whole word was there. But it was bold, and then the rest of the word was like really light. And so my brain just focused on the first three letters. And it's crazy because as you're reading it, you're not only you start predicting, but it's you you start to put what the what they're trying to communicate. And so I can get I saw myself getting ahead real quick. It was wild. So yeah. wild. It's called yeah, bionic reading. That. That's what it's called. Yeah, I just it's what a, is it called bionic bionic or bionic reading. reading. Yeah. So a Swiss topography designer has a low tech solution. So this helps people read, read fast. He discovered that bolding the initial parts of words allows the eyes to focus only on them, allowing the brain to quickly fill in the rest of the word. It's something that could be very welcome for anyone who's availed themselves of one of the best Kindle deals to get themselves a new e-reader. So it's called bionic reading. So the, the Kindle does it already? I don't know, but I think uh, it's got to exist as an app or something. Somebody yeah, has some, to have that up. Look that up to, because if, I'm going to for sure going to do that. And I would love to try and read a book like that and see what I... Because you just apply it, right? It would take the, yeah, bionic reading. Look at that. Interesting. It was cool. it was super wild to see that and and just without trying. Yeah, I mean yeah. it just I, I with your, yeah, I'm gonna with have your to brain. try it out. Yeah, yeah, dude, I went down a rabbit hole of reading about the training and because I find I, I thought to myself I said this is an athlete that might be interesting to read about because uh, their performance is actually quite remarkable and I've never really truly studied them before. So I went down a rabbit hole of sumo wrestlers. 
Mm. <laughs> I did. Well, look, I'll tell you what. You, oh, you, there's super high performance listen, athletes. Sumo wrestlers you think. are, for all intents and purposes, the big guys are obese, but they have tremendous flexibility and strength and dexterity and stamina. Go ahead, Doug. You, you found it. But yeah. So there's a an app in the app store. Called Bionic Reading. Bionic Reading. Oh, so getting it right now. My business idea. Right getting there. it right now. And you yeah. see it, Justin? See how it looked just like that uh -huh. one right there. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. It so is, is, is it all, it's, sometimes it's not three letters. Sometimes it's only two. Sometimes it's one, right? Is that right? Yeah, it depends on how many words. It, right. In, it's like I a mean, longer word. It's letters in the word. Can yeah. you drop a book in there? That's, or what it's it? like, that's what it says. Okay. Yep. Oh, I'm downloading it right oh, now. Yeah. Bionic anyway, so, Reading. So sumo wrestlers. All right, back to that. So uh, big people, big dudes, many of them obese at the higher weight classes. Crazy flexibility. They could do the splits. Uh, they're strong as hell, mobile, fast. Super, super like, fast twitch. How do they like train? Like, What do they do? What do they eat? So their diet is really interesting. So you know what they do? They train fasted hard to exhaustion. And around noon, they eat a meal. And they say, basically, you train until you're starving. And then you eat so much food, you feel like you can't eat anymore. And the meal that they eat is there, there's a traditional dish called Chonkonabe, I think it's called. That's is that right. it, Doug? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the soup Pasta. that's like, no, it's like meat. Uh, there's different kinds. There it is. Meat, vegetables. There's There could be ramen in there. It's this big pot of stew. Uh, so it's it's a very digestible that way it, in a soup. It's a very high calorie, high protein uh, dish. Have you ever had it? I have a couple times. Uh, it looks so like pho. It's, no, it's not. It's, so it's, it's meat, it's vegetables, it's a broth. Mm. They eat that and then... They at after they've done that, then they'll put rice or noodles in there, and then eat the rest. And then eat they the eat rest. a tub of Ben and Jerry's. Uh, no, they do have. Apparently, they drink beer. That's and it. other things. So I thought, too. what do they do? Anything unhealthy? Because they don't eat fast food. The traditional sumo wrestlers don't eat a ton of fast food or, or garbage. They drink a lot of beer and sake. So apparently, yeah. that's another thing that they include in their diet for for the weight. Lots of rice, though, too. Inter yeah. Yeah. Interest. That's but it. but the but the tradition around sumo that I've been reading about is so fascinating to me. So when you start, this isn't a traditional sumo, right? When you start as a kid, oftentimes they go in as a kid. First, it's very technical. Sumo's got techniques and skills like judo or any other grappling art. They go in, and you are basically like. Like you have to clean, you have to wash other sumo wrestlers. You do what they tell you. Like you are nothing until you work your way up and then become a recognized wrestler yourself. Oh, wow. But when you go into train, like it's all about like, you gotta wash those diapers that they put. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm tell I swear I was reading about this. Like they help Real. wash the big sumo wrestlers. They feed them their food. They, they help massage them. They take care of them for the train. So it's like you're it's working like the with these, like these senseis. Until you yourself become that's, at this high level. That's team funny. manager used to throw jock straps. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Look at the side. Oh, that's uh, what's his name? That's Konishki. Konishki. Yeah, oh, yeah, he was the biggest guy. Sure with uh, is he one, one of the them, biggest guys or what? He yeah, was he's one a, of the biggest. He's uh, Hawaiian. Yeah. Wow. He was one of the. But I mean, you see these guys. Wow. You know, I think Konishki was what six hundred pounds, something like that. Yeah. So he's a six hundred pound man. Okay. The guy, the way he would move for a six hundred pound guy yeah. is just it would trip you out. I, I imagine that that would What's be the life you, expectancy on, on yeah. Them. yeah they, you know, you know, there's you know one of the biggest celebrations for a sumo wrestler is their fortieth. Is it fortieth birthday, Doug? I'm not sure. No. Maybe look it, it up. It's like they, a big deal. If they, they make turn, it that far if they when they turn forty. Yeah, it's like dude. a big deal. So they're regarded as uh, in Japan. They're like big time superstars. Yeah, over there. That's yeah. well, that's so wild. Yeah. If we ever go to Japan, oh wait, I definitely would like to see one of those matches. It'd be crazy. <clears throat> oh yeah, so, and they'll 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 smack each other. In the face. Yeah. Some of them are fast. Some of them are the average important. Japanese male lives to eighty five. Oh yeah, they have one of the highest uh life expectancies. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. Because I was like, sixty five ain't down. bad for a for I mean that's longer 60 than sixty to sixty five. That's better than our NFL NFL players. Well, uh, so think about this. Better, you're yeah. you're obese, you're this massive person, but you still live to sixty, sixty five. That just goes to show you I know their, that their traditional way of being massive is healthier than Yeah, I mean they're still they American still have, I'm sure they have some pretty <laughs> yeah. decent cardio, right? They gotta have some decent cardio to be in a, a sumo match. They train really hard, yeah. they do lots of flexibility training, lots of foot stomping. Lots of pounding on the ground. I guess it, incur it it helps them with their speed and dexterity. So I'm looking more into because I'm like, what is there? Some I wonder if there's something I could the learn new from. map sumo. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who, who wants yourself. to be 600 pounds and agile, <laughs> bulk like a sumo? <laughs> By the way, so here's you want to talk Perma about bulk. you want to talk about shitty, right? So this is I I, I did know about sumo wrestlers that they ate very infrequently because they do they train for a long time and they eat like these like two or three massive meals. I used to use that as intermittent a bulking. I used to use that as a selling point. 
yeah. when I was a trainer and I didn't know any better. What, and I thought small encourage meals. frequency. I said, there's only one athlete in the world that doesn't eat small meals. You know which one that is? A sumo wrestling. Because <laughs> 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 it slows down your metabolism. That's not why. Oh, man. That's not why. Hey, you, did you guys see? Spin. Uh, I know. I, 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 <laughs> I, th I, I need, thought it was, sounded so right. Yeah, you know I, mean? I need Doug to fact check me because I, I I can't. I mean, uh, uh, my information is coming from TikTok, so you can't. Can, you can't. Uh, <laughs> That's wrong. It's pretty reliable. Ben and Jerry's ice cream locks. Locks? Yeah, like a lock for your ice cream so nobody else can eat it. So no one else can eat it. Look it up, Doug. Look it up. So look up Ben and Jerry's ice cream lock. See if they and uh, it looked real. It's real. It is real, yeah. Walmart, Amazon. Yeah. So it has, it has a it has a three digit code, so it locks the top so people can't that's such a dad invention right there. So <laughs> so okay, so I shared it, That's it, you're so not creative though if you use that. You gotta do what my dad did. Well, he would put it in containers of stuff that wasn't ice cream. Hey, yeah. so are you pulling it up for the guys? Yeah, I'm pulling up right so now. So I did a t I shared a TikTok yesterday because I one I didn't even know this thing existed, which I thought that was hilarious it existed, and then I saw this girl. Wow, here. it's a legit lock. It's a oh legit lock, God. and it locks the the top of it right. And like so this why? TikTok is this it, someone's just this, someone's talking about it like, oh yeah, someone keeps stealing my ice cream, so I got the new Ben and Jerry. It's one of those split screens where someone's uh, watching them. Yeah. And the, so this girl's like talking about how she got the Ben and Jerry's thing because someone in the family's stealing, it, and she's showing how it works with that. And there's the other girl who's who's watching the video, and all of a sudden she she picks her hand up. She got the ice cream and it's flipped upside down. Yeah, she's just, just, it the yeah. <laughs> she just cut the she just cut the bottom out. And she's, <laughs> That's great. I died. Perfect. I'm like, what is stupid? Yeah, you know, it's crazy That's if you exactly buy that for hack, like thirty right? bucks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I guess I guess though, like then there's like definitely a culprit, right? Because I, I how many houses have somebody who's like, who ate my? I, I don't know. Like it, it was half my full. My dad gets so pissed. Yes. Me and my brother, we would just like take bites, and then you know when you take one little bite, you sneak. You, Go back and then see how much Dude, you can get you know away what, with. You know what made my dad so mad once is that he would buy uh, Neapolitan. I think it is where it's like it's like chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla. Mm -hmm. And yes. we would eat. We would just we would just scoop just out the chocolate vanilla. Even the strawberry. Just, <laughs> even the like so <laughs> we just leave the strawberry in the middle. Uh, <laughs> he used to get so pissed off. <laughs> Dude, yeah, we would do that with the, like the cookie dough. We just eat the cookie dough balls. Oh, so it's just, just chocolate chip just, ice cream. Yeah, just, <laughs> you're like, I thought this was cookie dough ice cream. You know, None. my yeah. You know what? I used to piss me off. My mom would never buy like the expensive cereals. It was always a, the, like the multi meal whatever. But every once in a while, she'd be like, "I'm gonna buy Lucky Charms for yeah, you." Lucky eat all kid. the marshmallows out. Oh. I go. Pour it out, no marshmallows. My brother was like that. Oh. He's a psychopath. Oh. Like, I leave me with like who who in their right mind is just going to eat the, the bits, the oats. Well, the funny bits. part of that means is they pour they poured it out, then they picked it and ate it, and then they poured it Pour back, it back in. in. Yeah, <laughs> just throw it away. At this point, you ruined it. Yeah. My, so anyway, my other my then I would get them back because then my mom would buy uh, smacks. Remember smacks? Yeah, with oh, the frog yeah. on it. And oh, I used yeah. to love it. I'd be like, oh, it's gonna be a good day. And I'd go up to my younger siblings, like, you guys want some smacks? See, that's yeah. like one of those. That's like one of those. They, they like exactly know. Like this is like crack. You know? yeah, yeah. This is like a drug. Yeah. Like, smacks. Here you go. God. What would happen to you now if you ate a bowl of one of them cereals? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Explosively <laughs> running for the bathroom. So yeah. When was the last time any of you had actual like a traditional bowl, not magic spoon, a traditional bowl of ice cream or, or, or cereal? Cereal. Yeah. Um, uh, I had. I thought, uh, didn't you? I thought you said I had Cheerios. Honey Nut Cheerios here. Oh, you did. Remember, I, I came I in here one day and I'm like, right. I need some carbs. I'm trying to bulk a little bit. I ran out of. I forgot to bring Ugh, some. I hate so I stopped the grocery Ugh, store and I bought uh, Honey Nut Cheerios. I'm like, yeah, I had these for a while. It's gluten free. I mean, it's not that bad. I right? always hate how they smell, bro. I Honey Nut Cheerios. Ugh. Oh, they're Cheerios good. are awful. You don't God. like Cheerios? I'm, I'm talking sure. about Honey Nut Cheerios. Well, all of them. Okay, yeah, so all, you know, it has a smell the to them. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, well, but anyway, there's a box right there. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I ate a whole big bowl. Remember, I ate it in here. Yeah, I do. I crashed. That's so, why my I was energy like, crashed so hard. I knew you had it sooner or uh, recent. That's. I mean, I guess it's kind of cereal. I was thinking like like a real like Lucky Charms. No, dude, I had Flakes, I have cinnamon so crunch, dude. Yeah, or Did cinnamon. You? It was like year like a couple years ago when we were camping, and it was like it, for some reason there's an association with like camping. You just eat like shitty food like because yeah. you're just like oh hot dogs and, and you know sugar cereal yeah. It's, yeah. it was a thing so yeah I, I that was the first time i had it with like my kids and they were like oh my god it was <laughs> like i was giving them like like heroin or something it's crazy <laughs> it's engineered kids yeah. yeah there you go do we have a shout out for today uh you did you oh, had two. I did. oh <laughs> this yeah two well, sent, well, he sent two in and then he forgot i have shot. one i have one if you can't find it dude yeah. uh, uh it's well, just, I, shit i gotta go look for it now no it jerry is. jerry sent it over I just saw I saw the text before we started the podcast. Yeah. Jerry sent over two people that said, Sal asked me to remind him. Oh, here we him. go. Uh, Instagram, get mom strong. This is a pregnancy and postpartum fitness specialist on oh, okay. Instagram. Yeah, get mom strong. Good stuff. That's Check a, it little, out. a little more relevant than mine.
Hey, look, check this out. There's a company called Paleo Valley that makes grass-fed meat sticks that are delicious. They're not dry like most beef jerkies. They're high-protein, quality snacks on the go. By the way, Paleo Valley makes lots of paleo-inspired products. Go check them out and get a discount. Go to paleovalley.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mindpump15 for 15% off your first order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Russ from Florida. Russ, what's happening, man? How can we help you? It is a great day out here. Yeah. All righty. So a couple questions, but one of the big ones is satiety when it comes to hunger in bulking and cutting phases. I don't know if it's specifically me, but I follow like a high protein, high carb, high fat diet, but I'm never satiated when it comes to like all my food. <laughs> are we, have, are we trying to bulk? Are we trying to, what are you yeah, trying we, to do right now? What's yeah. What's the problem? Right now I'm trying to bulk, put on some more size, some more muscle. So for right now when, when I'm cutting, it's even more kind of painful. I, I stay with, you know, 1.1, 1.4 range of protein per pound. And I never full ever. Okay. So I'm looking at you. You look pretty fit. I see your stats here. You're, you're a muscular dude, 5'11", 208, 15% body fat. That's a good body fat percentage. Um, not really, in, and you're 22, so you're young. Not really an issue um, if you're trying to bulk, right? If you're trying to bulk, well, then that just helps. It helps you eat. But I, I, this is probably more of a challenge when you're trying to cut. Does this feel like uh, like a like a like a big deal to you? Like like what is wrong with me, or is it just? Hey, I, I keep eating and I feel like I want to eat more. Hunger pains. Like, like explain what? this because there's there's actual like medical conditions that can cause insatiable hunger, um, where you you would want to get checked by a professional. And then there's like the typical, you know, I'm a, I'm a young dude, lift weights, got a lot of muscle, fast metabolism. I like to eat more, you know, type of issues. So, and is this out of the ordinary? In other words, have you experienced a dramatic change in your appetite, uh, you know, versus how you maybe used to be? I guess what I'm, I guess the problem is at when I'm cutting specifically, I eat 2,300 calories. I can't keep focused on any of my activities when it comes to just normal activities. I'm always thinking about the next meal and I have it all, you know, I have meal prep and everything like that, but it's kind of an overbearing feeling of I want more food. That's because 2,300 calories is low for a dude your size. Especially if you're eating. You, then you have another, it says 3,800 3, calories. So assuming is 3,800 calories the bulk. And that's my, that's no, your, yeah, that's what I'm trying to put on like a little bit more. I'm at 214 right now. Yeah, bro. That's a big gap. Yeah, I would. So 3,800 3, to cut to 2,300. Yeah, you're going to feel that yeah, way. It's a big drop. You're going to feel that way. Your cut should, I wouldn't, I wouldn't 3, have you 000. cut. Yeah, 3,000. That's yeah. where I'd have you go. And uh, 2,300 is way too low of a cut. I mean, maybe a day or two, but it's just it's just too too big of a of a gap, and you're gonna feel um, really strong uh, cravings from that. I also want to point out this, you know, interesting phenomenon when it comes to bulking and cutting. It's the I think it's such a it's so interesting how our bodies want homeostasis so bad that anything just outside of that is uncomfortable, right? So like my my entire life of bulking was hard because I it, I had a hard time hitting that calorie threshold in order to put me in like a bulk. And then when it was time to cut, it felt like I was hungry all the time. It's just, it's, it's actually very normal to be that way, but this is extreme to go from 3,800 all the way down to 2,300. It's, it's, it's too much. You yeah. don't need to do that. Russ, to give you an example, let's say you were to compete on, in a, on a bodybuilding stage. So you're going to get down to a unhealthy body fat percentage, right? Because when you get on bodybuilding stage, you're going to walk on there 2% body fat, 3% body fat, just shredded, and it's not a healthy body fat percentage. The, you would end at 2,300 calories or maybe even more. In other words, if you did a bodybuilding cut, which I would not recommend to anybody uh, unless you're trying to compete, you would probably end at 2,300. So for, so for you to go from 38 to 2,300, that's extreme. I would have you at 3,000 calories, yeah. and that, that will give you some nice, consistent fat loss, and it's going to be way more manageable. But to cut from, you know, that's, that's you're cutting uh, a tremendous, what is that, 1,500 calories? Over 1,000. Yeah. yeah, that's out of, your, out of your diet just to bring you down to 2,300. You're going to feel, you're going to feel terrible. You're going to probably feel fatigued, performance issues, sleep issues, libido may change. You'll notice lots of cravings to, to you know, to supplement that. So uh, your cuts just too, too, part, too part big. of this challenge too, is like I, the desire. I did. Go ahead. So 
this is my 3,800. What I put in was what I'm at right now. I just got maybe four, four months ago. I've been working my way up to 3,800 and I worked my way down from 3,500 on my last cut. So I did it in slow progression, but I okay. wasn't losing more weight. And that that's where I ended because I didn't want to go any lower than 23. But in the bulk right now, I'm always hungry. I'm more hungry bulking no matter how much I eat. Ooh, let me ask, like, let me ask you this, Russ. How are your strength gains right now in the gym? Strength gains are out of the roof. I'm I'm getting much stronger than yeah. You know yeah. You, you know what's happening, right? yeah, yeah, bro, Russell, bro. Yeah, you're yeah. in you're in like a really anabolic state. Yeah. One of the number one signs that I get for me and for clients when we're building and everything's going right, uh, besides strength gains, is hunger. They're just like, man, I want to eat more, and then we go to the gym and they just get stronger, and then they eat more and they get stronger. You're really anabolic right now, so it's not a bad sign that you're eating 3,800 calories. You're still hungry, and your strength is 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 you know according to you, doing really, are you hitting PRs? Are you stronger than you've ever been? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hit, oh, I'm hit, I'm, I don't do one rep max. I do more like boxed four by four type uh, maxes. And I just hit 285 for six on the incline. So yeah. Yeah. You're a strong kid, dude. You're, yeah. you're, you're yeah, doing bro, you're, pretty good. You're doing, uh, hey, honestly, if you're at 3,800 and you still feel hungry, you could probably hover right around there and you'll slowly build and lean out. Yeah. Good it's point. just, a, it's just a slow pro. I mean, this is the hard part, right? Like, you know, and I get it, you know, uh, you want things faster. And so you're like, oh, I so you aggressively bulk or you aggressively cut, but it's like, you're eating a good amount of calories. You're getting stronger inside the gym. Mm -hmm. You're still hungry so that your body's probably telling you, you could handle more calories, but you keep it right around 3,800. I bet you would night you'd slowly and I, I tell you what composition change yeah right? just stay at 3800 trust the process for like three weeks chest your body fat again and i bet you your body fat percentage goes down even if the scale doesn't move and honestly that means you're in a beautiful sweet spot i bet you drop a percent like goldilocks zone. Yeah, yeah probably a percent to a percent and a half every three weeks which is slow but you're going to be building muscle at the same time that's a nice place to be by the way 15 percent is a good healthy athletic body fat percentage it's not like shredded but it's, it's good. It's a great body fat percentage to be at to build. Um, and if you cut, you can get down to 10%. I think we'd be able to get you down to 10% pretty well. But I love what Adam just said. Yeah. I think he's 100% right. If you kept, if you stayed at 3,800 calories, kept training properly, kept getting stronger, you'd probably slowly lean out. Okay. Yeah, I, I've been I've been trying to keep it and not, not worry about the cutting phase because I'm just, just kind of enjoying the food right now because it was a long cut. It was too long. It was <laughs> Hmm. like six months. So it was, it was almost a problem of like that lower calorie range. Yeah. I think you're in a very sweet spot, bro. I think you would ju just be patient with it. Just stick with the 3,800 calories and give it some time because I think you're going to, I think you're going to naturally lean out. And and this is where I want to be. Like I want to be at a place where I'm eating good amount of calories. I still feel hungry. Uh, and my weight is kind of hovering around the same. And I bet you, if you test your body fat in two to three weeks, you're already going down. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's not unnormal to be excessively hungry eating. No. No. Is, is 310 grams of protein too much? Because I'm not feeling like I feel the rest of that's in carbs. For your for your size, so long as you feel your digestion is fine and you're not having yeah, any issues. If you're not having any issues with your gut or your stool, that's fine, bro. You're you're a big dude with a lot of muscle. And you're, I mean, dude, you're, you're in a really good, you're getting stronger and you feel good. Like you're in a really good place right now. Just gotta be patient. Yeah. Gotta be patient. And you're not, you're not even really doing any cardio right now. 15 minutes of cardio. That's it. So I would just, I would stay the course. And if you want to speed up, maybe a little bit of the leaning out process, walk a couple times a day. So add some movement, not, not cardio, not hard, intense stuff. Just move more. Uh, a little bit more throughout your day, you know, week over week, try and increase. I, I love to increase steps by like 2000 a day for every week. I go up a little bit like on a client and between that hanging your calories right around the 3,800 and continue to get stronger. You're going to lean out. Yep. Cool. Yep. All righty. Yeah. You got it. Good job, Russ. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. I was just had that quick question. Yeah. yeah you dude. got it, man. Yep. Keep it up, bro. I have one more quick question. Oh yeah, sure. When it comes to jobs, with people that are away from the gym and your, your normal diet, what's the best program you recommend? I'm out for context. I'm a pilot and I'm going to school to be a pilot. And I know that the lifestyle is going to be completely different than how I have it set up now. And I would like to figure out and plan and get um, ahead of the game to program it so I can still remain healthy. 
Well, there's two ways. I'll say if you don't have Maps 15, I'll send that to you because that's very accessible, um, and uh, you'd be surprised at the results you get. The other option, which would be good too, is when you do have access to a gym, a full body workout, you know, even a couple days a week is enough to at least maintain muscle and strength for someone like yourself. So it's like, okay, I can make it to the gym. Let me just train my whole body. Maybe do one or two exercises per body part, you know, type of deal. Like those two options right there. I think, do you have maps 15? Cause if you don't, I'll send that to you. I do not. Okay, Russ. That's, those are, that's like good generic advice to you. The best advice would be to hit us back when you're in that, when you're in it. Right. So we can hear you tell us like how your sleep and stress is and when you do have days off and when you don't, and then we can give you more specific. So like, Stay the course. You're doing good right now. As as you when you start a transition into being a pilot and your and your schedule gets flipped up, I sit down and hit us back up. Hit us back up, and then we can talk about how you feel and what's going on. Then we can be a little bit more specific about what I think because it's right now we're just guessing, right? We're yeah. guessing that oh, this would probably help you, yeah. but it's like who knows? Maybe you feel great training the way you are. I you know I do understand that like we we just had a pilot actually do question what. Last week wasn't it? Last yeah, week, he was in the Air Force. Yeah, we had a, yeah. we had a, we had a pilot on there, and and he you know, he had fly for twelve hours straight, and so we were helping him. So if you haven't heard that, go back to the questions. I think we just did last week, Doug. Is that? Yeah, I'm not sure which episode it is, but uh, yeah, just go back a couple. Look at the show notes. Yep, we'll do. Does right. that be a big? It's right. like a problem that I'm worried about, but yeah, I you, know there's other like working out. I was reading on Maps 15, so I'd like that one. Appreciate yeah, it. We'll send that and then listen to that. You'll listen to that, uh, that question when he called in because you could hear us go back and forth with him and kind of troubleshoot like what his schedule looks like and you can hear all the suggestions that we gave him. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. You all right, Russ. Yep. You, know, you know what? It's funny. Is, uh, th like so What he just explained is an excellent place to be and he's worried about it. This is where I'm at right now uh, or I feel like I'm at. I, I'm literally eating so much food and all that's happening is I'm just building muscle and I feel lean and I yep. feel good and my appetite's roaring and I've been here before. I know what it, I know what, it, I know what, what, what this means. It means I'm super anabolic. It means I'm building muscle. I'm in a place, a, a really good place when it comes to muscle building and strength. And I know Adam, when you were competing, you were saying you were eating like 40 something. Oh, it's, I'm, I'm so, in, I've been, how long have I been saying that to you? I'm so envious of where you're yeah, at right now. Yeah. Cause I remember what it's like to just have, that roaring metabolism when you've been training hard and consistent and you've put on all kinds of more muscle than you've ever put on in your life. It's like you, it's so it's a great place to be metabolically because you yeah. can get away with eating out here and there. So long as you stay consistent with your train, you hit your macro targets, you really get a lot of flexibility and it's a, it's a really great place to be. And I mean, I'm on a mission to try and get back there again. And I've been watching you for a while. I'm going like, God damn, I wish I could eat like that right now. <laughs> Cause that's a, it's a fun place to be. He's, what it is, is you're 22 and you're impatient. Yeah. And I get it because I'm 40 something and I'm still learning yeah, yeah, to be yeah, more yeah. patient. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's really just that, like you're in a really good place. If you're eating 3,800 calories, you're 15% body fat, you're fucking strong as an ox, like, and yep. you're getting stronger. Yep. Like that means you're building muscle. And the reason why he's so hungry is because his body's building more muscle and it wants more calories right. to, to yeah. support it. He's and by him material. not bumping his calories, what he'll probably do is just slowly burn body fat and, and maintain his lean mass. Yeah, that was great advice. Yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, stay the course, bro. All right, our next caller is Ryan from Ireland. Ryan, what's happening? How can we help you? How are you, lads? What um, up, man? First of all, I, I suppose I'll, I'll th thank you for having me on. Um, it's a bit it's a bit surreal actually seeing you on the screen there, rather than although we see you on screen anyway. It's a uh, it's it's a bit weird actually talking to me in person. Um, I've been listening for about five years now, so. Uh, Oh great! Yeah, nice. love, right love everything you guys put out. It's 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 absolutely amazing. Thank you, appreciate um, that, Ryan. So thanks for that. Um, I get into my question. So currently, I'm I'm running Maps Performance, uh, and I'm actually just after starting my third week, just completing the first foundational day on Monday. Um, the I'm in during the workouts. I'm finding my energy is just kind of dropping off towards the end. Um. And I suppose my question is, is there any tips you could give me in order to like maybe reserve energy last, last, last longer throughout the workout and that sort of stuff, or even increase overall energy? Um, I've been, I've been kind of resistance training for about eight or nine years now. Um, never really trained for any goal um, other than I just enjoyed it, wanted to keep strong, keep healthy. Um, stuck to more bodybuilding style training uh, throughout the time 
but also wanted to get strong at the same time. So lower volume uh, compound lifts and then more volume in the in the the exercises. Um, so yeah, any help I'd appreciate any help you you guys could give me. Yeah, yeah. there's a normal there's a normal drop off in energy towards the end of the workout, but it sounds like you're explaining kind of like a like I'm really getting fatigued and it kind of you know dragging through the rest of the workout. Yeah. Is that what you're explaining? It's like taxing you a lot. Yeah, like I would say coming towards maybe the the last second or third exercises, like I'm feeling like I have to extend my rest period because I'm <laughs> I'm absolutely fucked to be honest. Yeah, so <laughs> you use uh, creatine at all? I do. I was super, I've supplemented with creatine for as long as I've been training. Okay. So, the, the, so for eight, nine years. I also eat a lot of red meat, um, especially at the minute, uh, because I've kind of switched switched mm -hmm. the diet around over the last little while. There's going to be the, the answer is probably in one of the following um, categories. Well, the first one would be, um, you know, sleep. So yeah. if your sleep is not optimal, if you're not getting great sleep, that can have a, a massive impact. The second one would be nutrition and in particular pre-workout nutrition or even for some people, intra-workout nutrition. So he, all, he, did you hear what he said? He mm. said he just switched up the diet. So I'd actually like to hear what you did. Did you like go to like a low carb and a high, high protein or high fat type of diet? What'd you do? I, yeah. Yeah. Oh. That, that, mm. That's exactly it. So like, I, over the, the last little while I felt like I was, I was, I was just, I was, I was bored of the way I was eating to be honest. So I recently, around the same time I started a uh, performance, I switched to like a, higher fat diet which i'd never done before um now I, i'm still taking in carbs around the workout so i'm taking about 60 60 grams beforehand about an hour an hour and a half beforehand about 60 grams after just to kind of help replenish i got an idea energy for you. Stores the i got an idea for you uh ryan why don't you do uh go for 80 to 100 grams before yeah. and then have like 20 grams after so move some of the after carbs to before that's probably going to make the biggest impact or Go 62 hours before and then drink 20 grams of carbs uh, during the workout. That's the other option. What time are you lifting at? Dep depends on the day, to be honest. So I, I work, I work, it tends to be like a, an eight to four type job. If I get an hour off in between, I would, or a couple of hours off during the day, I would kind of head to the gym. I have a gym five minutes away. So I get to the gym. I try to plan ahead though. So like I, it could be 12 o'clock in the day, but it also could be a rush hour at, at six o'clock in the evening when. Okay. Well, that's, I, I was asking because I wanted to make sure you were like in the afternoon or evening. So, so I don't know if you've heard me talk about this on the show, but I kind of figured this out for myself. So Sal's advice of like front loading the carbs before the workout is, so I, I used to have to have two good sized meals with 60 to 70 grams of carbs before my workout to really fuel that workout. And those were my best workouts. If I had half of that, they were kind of, I kind of were, I was, and if I had none of that and I went no, no carb and I went in like fasted, I just could not train. I would fatigue at the end of it. So I felt I needed that. So I would, I would do what he said. You could either put it in a single meal or you could put it in like two meals before. So like your breakfast, give it 60 grams of carbs. Then like your, your lunch, that's an hour and a half or whatever before your workout, another 60 or so grams of carbs and see how you feel. I bet you'd feel better uh, by doing that. Okay. Yeah. So, sounds good. Um, just a, a, a quick follow on question. You mentioned sleep there. Um, I, I get about seven, seven and a half hours of sleep, but I tend to not know about quality of sleep. Like, is there any kind of markers there or any, any, I suppose, um, symptoms of like how how well to judge your sleep like that you would be familiar with or anything like that yeah, yeah. this is where like an aura ring would be yeah. awesome well you know you do wake up uh do you wake up feeling tired still do you just hit the sack exhausted here's the other thing too Se seven and a half hours you're probably timing the time you go to bed to the time you wake up which means you're probably getting close to six and a half to seven because there's a period of time that you're you're not asleep when you go to bed so what I would do um, is I would try to increase that time by an hour. So try to go to bed an hour early um, or wake up an hour later or half hour each or whatever. And uh, that will increase the quality sleep number by the same amount it should. That makes a huge difference for a lot of people, like a massive difference. In fact, uh, we just had someone on the podcast who tracks these things quite a bit with, his, with the athletes that he trains. Mm -hmm. 
he tells people to get nine hours because that usually results in seven and a half hours to eight hours of, of good sleep. Yeah, there's there's uh, there's a few things you could yeah. do too. One, uh, I I have to I personally I have to cut back on my water, so I try not to drink too much water past six p.m. or else I'm getting up to pee all time. Um, I know that I'm magnesium deficient. Sixty percent of the population is magnesium de- deficient, so mellow before bed is like a game changer for me. Also trying to make your last meal at least a few hours, two, three or more hours before you go to bed. And then uh, what you do with your lights, like in your house, you know, turn dim, dimming the lights or turning them off, going by candlelight. If you have blue blockers and you're on screens or watching TV to limit that, but really start to put a little bit of a sleep routine together that you're consistent with like those types of steps and see how much that potentially improves how you feel. And you'll know, you'll know by the way you wake up in the morning, you'll feel more refreshed when you get up versus like groggy or dragging mm-hmm. your feet if it's something that you needed. Now too, you said you're doing a, mainly like hypertrophy kind of training before this bodybuilder style, and then you switched it over towards more of the performance. Um, I'm just wondering because I've had quite a few clients that have never trained that way before. And it was a lot more demanding, even just neurologically, like just, you know, to be able to get yourself in all these positions and learn, you know, how to kind of go through that and your body got taxed a bit more. So that's a bit normal if that's the case. Uh, and you'll kind of work through yeah, that. Yeah, and you just point. lower the intensity throughout the workout to be able to, to, to do it all completely. That's a really good point, Justin. Yeah. If you're used to training more bodybuilder, strong type man, and then you go into performance, performance is a lot. It's Perfor- totally performance different. kicks the shit out of me every <laughs> because I don't train that way regularly. So anytime I train like performance, it tax me like a different level yeah. than training like strong or like power lift or ana- maps anabolic. All those like that's in my wheelhouse. Performance kicks my ass. So that's that's actually kind of normal too. That's a good point. I actually I, I, I actually couldn't agree more with you because like um, the reason why I chose performance is because I want to be a bit more functional and yeah. get get all the rotation in there. So the fourth yeah. week. The first week, I I never fed me oblique so much in my life. It was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, I was, I was bent piece. over. I was yeah. bent over in pain some of the days, especially on on the mobility days. Like me hips, me hips whenever I saw during the 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 first couple of mobility uh, days. Okay. But they're, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I, I, I think I think yeah. Justin's getting closer to probably what we're you know Ryan. Honestly, as much as it doesn't sound like fun, you probably would benefit from running through it again. Yep because this is so foreign to you and it's an area you're trying to focus on as, as much as you probably want to move on from that program and do a different one, you probably would benefit. He's also, he's right. also 270 pounds, six foot tall. He's a big dude, yeah. big, strong dude. That's <laughs> yeah. going to be an exhausting way of exercising. For sure. Yeah. But uh, beneficial, and, beneficial though. And when you, when you say kind of run it through it again, Adam, would you say, would you say run through phase one again or run through the whole program? The whole, the whole, then, yeah. the whole program again. Yeah. Go th- go okay, through a yeah. whole. No- I think I think okay. you'd benefit running through a whole another, and then also see how much better you're at it. Right? Hopefully yeah. you you feel better the second time around. And if you still don't, it is potential. Uh, you know, Sal talked about breaking bringing down some of the the volume, so it wouldn't hurt if there's like so. Like for example, oh, I wait. I, I go lighter. I bet the yeah, the yeah. the lunge matrix was just uh, a motherfucker. Phase two kills her. Yeah. Oh fair. Jesus yeah. Christ. Right. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. So something like that. Like you could probably you know uh, take a set off. Of that, or cut, or go like Sal just suggested, really go light. You know, even body weight mm-hmm. crushes people on mm-hmm. that sometimes. So, so yeah, I'd run it, run it again, and and hopefully you feel even better the second time around, and or potentially scale back on some of the volume. But it sounds like you had the self awareness to know that your body probably needed this, and you're doing it, and you're feeling it a lot, and it's, that's a good sign. That means the body's adapting, and and I think you have an opportunity to go through it again and see see tremendous benefits still. Totally. Yep. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I've I've dropped I've, I've dropped weight. I'm still eating the same amount of calories and that sort of stuff. But it's if like the new the new stimulus have done it's done me the world of good. So oh, that's awesome. Um, Great. That's that's perfect. I'll, I'll keep running through it. I'll keep going. I'll get more sleep. And uh, yeah, Beautiful. thanks very much, lads. Thanks, thanks, yeah. Raz. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, keep us updated. No problem. All right. Yeah, when you you train like a bodybuilder for a long time, that and a good, you're a big dude. That was a great yeah. point, Justin. Made. You know what it is? Is you go. You think you know what, how much weight you use on certain exercises, and you try to apply it towards a functional workout like performance. It's not going to be the same. Yeah, no, no, performance is just a bitch, bro. If you've never, tra- if you don't train functional training like that, like you saw it too. Since we brought lunge weights, you're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah. I still have nightmares about that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> PTSD. Like, for yeah, half dude. The people. 
Yeah, I know. So he's, different style of training. Sounds so. like he's doing great, though. I mean, he's eating the same amount of calories and he's dropping weight. So, yep. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, I think he would benefit from running it a second time for sure. All right, our next caller is Kerry from California. Hey, Kerry, how can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, first, I just wanted to say thanks for all the great information you guys put out. I find you guys hilarious. So uh, sometimes I'll go to listen to something else. I'm like, no, I just want to listen to those guys. So, ah, yeah. Thank you. Forget all that other stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just as a background, um, I'm seven months postpartum with my third child, and I'm just kind of trying to set myself for, up for success in the future. Um, in the past, I've always been someone that worked out, but I kind of was doing the diet my whole life, very restrictive during the week. And on the weekends, it would be more off track and then starting all over on Mondays. And uh, when I found your podcast a few months back and heard like, oh, there's women eating like 2,200 calories at maintenance. I was like, what? That's not possible. Um, <laughs> And just listening more and more to you guys, I'm like, wow, I don't have to do cardio and, you know, eat at 1300 calories to lose weight. So now I'm at a point where, you know, I have maybe like the last 10, 12 pounds to lose and I'm still breastfeeding and I just don't know what direction to head because I've never done, I guess, a bulk. Um, although I feel like that's kind of what I've been doing the past several months um, because I'm not really losing weight. I'm just sort of lifting weights and wanting to lose weight, but sort of just staying at the same place. Um, I'm probably at about like 22 to 2,400 calories a day. And I just don't know where to go from here. Um, I kind of want to be at a good position after I'm done breastfeeding to keep the weight off, but not having to live at, you know, 1400 calories. Are you following a mass program? Um, so I had started doing the 15 minutes program, um, and it was really liking that, but then I kind of feel like I would like to do a little bit longer of sessions, fewer days a week. Um, so my husband has, um, aesthetics. So I was considering doing that or, um, maybe I listened to your podcast Sal, the other day where you were describing like how you came up with anabolic. And I swear, I listened to it like three times because I was like, wow, the science behind this is amazing. And I love the idea of the trigger sessions. So um, I was thinking, should I go for that or should I just yeah, do the aesthetics? Yeah. yeah. No, go for MAPS sure. Anabolic. MAPS Anabolic. For aesthetic sure. is way is going to be way too much volume and it's just not going to produce the results you're looking for. I would go MAPS Anabolic. And while you're nursing your baby, while you're still breastfeeding, I would not try to go into a cut. Definitely that's, not. That's a, that's a bad, um, uh, it's a, just a bad approach. It typically doesn't result in great results. So I would try to maintain or just build strength throughout the process. And then when you stop breastfeeding, you'll be in a good position to, to cut a little bit. But, you know, the body fat percentage right now, you're doing great. I, I would, If you were my client, I would say, we're not going to cut. Let's just feed your body, switch programs, build some muscle. You'll probably naturally lean out slowly through this process. But I wouldn't want you to aggressively try to lean out. It's I'd, not I'd actually want you to bulk right now. I think you're in a good position. The fact that you're eating 22 to 2,400 calories, you're not really – gaining you're not really losing at that at that pace uh, doug's going to send you maps anabolic we're going to send that over to you for free and then i also want him to send you the reverse diet guide and i actually think that a good goal would be to slowly increase your calories kind of week over week and if you can uh you know get some walking in so what i would do is like if i was training you you're at say you're at 20 300 just so we'll take the middle there where you got 2300 calories we'd stay there for a week or two and you're as you're running through maps and a bulk then i'd bump you up to say 24 to 2500 calories when i bumped you up i'd say okay now i want you to go and walk an extra 2000 steps a day which is an, about a 30 minute walk or so i'd say i want you to add that every day and then just let's see where your body goes for the next two weeks hopefully in the next two weeks i don't see any gain weight gain on the scale and then i'd bump your calories again and i would just keep doing that until we get you to a place you've never seen before like 27 2800 plus calories and you're not gaining any weight and now we've really set yourself up for when eventually you're off breastfeeding and then we go the other direction that would be ideal yeah so maybe by like 100 calories each time i bump or yep. yeah yep. that's yep. about right yep yeah, that, that sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I love that. Uh, and then I just have two kind of like quick questions for you guys. Um, one, I find with like my deadlifts, my lower body feels like it wants to go sh 
heavier, but my grip and is like mm. for like maybe eight reps, I'm feeling like, man, by the eighth rep, like I'm going to drop this, yeah. but mm-hmm. my leg heavier. So what do you do when it feels like your upper body isn't quite matching your lower? Well, the the weakest link is what's going to determine the weight. So you're going to, you're going to lift the weight that you can handle. And it really doesn't matter if it's your legs or your hands or your back that can't help. So you're going to train within that range. Mm -hmm. The other thing too, is are you using an alternate grip or double overhand grip? I'm using, I guess I'm using not uh, no, I guess when I'm doing my deadlifts, I'm doing overhand. Okay. Yeah. So try, try using an alternate, alternate grip. So one set where you'll have one hand facing forward, one hand back on oh. the next set switch. And that, you'll be able to hold on to a lot more weight that way. You can also do this oh. when, when I'm, when I'm heavy deadlifting with some of my, I have, I have a, a client who has like, who battles a carpal tunnel and we're always in like her, her grip is her limiting factor. And so let, let's say we're doing a heavy day where we're doing five reps and I want to really push her strength and it's her grip that gives. I'll, we'll do uh, two reps and then I'll let her set it down for a second and then pick it right back up as soon as she can. And so you don't have to hang on and do the, say, eight reps consecutively with n- like not a breather for your hands for a little bit. I'll let her do that. She'll do a rep, set it down, relax her grip for something, grip it again, pick it back up, mm-hmm. relax her grip, yeah, set but it if, back if down. If you're not using the alternate grip, though, uh, the alternate grip, you'll be able to handle like a, a, a lot more weight with that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've never tried that. That sounds really cool. Yeah. And then final question. I was looking at your no BS abs and I was like, oh, I love training abs. And I was like, uh, it's so- I had heard people say, oh, women shouldn't really use weighted ab workouts yeah, because terrible advice. Uh, you're going to like that? bulk up your midsection. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Carrie, do you, how do you feel whenever you hear anybody say women shouldn't and then blank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's well, a, that, yeah. that's, that's a red a flag. Yeah. That's a huge, anytime you hear- Put women, them on mute. Right yeah. away. Women shouldn't, eh, that's a red flag. No, no, no. You, you, yeah, your, your resistance on as long as your you form's got to be good. Okay, you have to have good form and technique. But training with resistance, it's like any other body part. It's just going to develop it better, sculpt it better. You're going to get stronger as a result. Um, but your form has to be good. So make sure your form and technique are good. Um, you can slow your form and technique down so that you have more resistance by slowing the weight down or by slowing the the, the movement down, or you can add resistance. But yeah. so long as it's appropriate, it's just like At any the other body the day, part. At the end of the day, yeah, it's a, it's a muscle like all the rest. So you just got to treat it that way and have appropriate weight uh, and resistance uh, you know, to progressively overload. So you just got to do it real gradually. That's right. Lifting, lifting heavy for your abs will make your abs more visible at a higher body fat percentage. That's the perk of doing that. So if you want to see your abs and not have to be as lean as maybe you had to in the past to see them by you lifting heavy will allow you to do yeah, that. It's, like, it's just like when you work out, you've been working out for a while. You look like you're pretty fit. You know that when you build muscle in your arms, they look more sculpted. They look leaner, even at higher body fat percentages, right? So it's the same thing with your core. No difference. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Oh man. Thank you guys. That was awesome. And you know, keep up the great work. Yeah. Thank Th- you. Thanks All for right. calling in. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, I got any time in anybody in the fitness space. Women shouldn't. <laughs> ugh, it's like, <laughs> shut up. It the hell out oh, of me. it's so annoying because women have really been. Uh, I mean, we're all sold, you know, false information in the space, but women are sold the most false information. So in much our space. bullshit. Yeah, it's it, terrible. Especially I, I the hope, high rep thing. I hope she reaches back out to us. I'd love to hear her progress because I think she's in a really good place right now. I yep. mean, uh, she's what thirteen hundred calories is what she'd end up doing to diet in the past. She's at twenty two, yep. twenty four right I, now. Look, I trained a lot of postpartum women and. All we would do is I would say eat while you're you know eat when you're hungry eat till you're satisfied just focus on healthy food, and what would naturally happen is it would naturally lean out. It's it's typically a bad idea when you're especially when you're breastfeeding especially when you're within you know ten months postpartum and you know but breastfeeding and ten months postpartum to try to cut to try to actively cut it's really fighting an uphill battle and it's not setting you up oh, for long term success. Two people. Yeah, just eat healthy, eat when you're hungry, eat till you're satisfied lift weights and what'll happen is you'll naturally lean out and you'll end up with a really great metabolism, which will put you in a good position, you know, when you're ready to start the cut later on. Look, if you like mind pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our guides. We have guides that can help you with many health and fitness goals, almost all of them. You can also find all of us on social media, Instagram. You can find Justin on Instagram at mind pump Justin. You can find me on Instagram at mind pump and you can find Adam on Instagram at mind pump Adam. 
Today, we're gonna to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me, it was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique.